Anxiety happens, there's a certain reach that happens, or they're a little bit passive on their block. So, putting them in, the, in a position where they can be upright and strong and feel comfortable in their stance, where you can always tell when I watch a little league game or I watch my guys play, the guy who's scared to death of the guy on third base is the guy that's starting to slouch and get lower and lower and lower. Uh -huh. So, it's about keeping that confidence, yeah, it helps your whole, whole game. Um, I've heard a lot about the importance of flexibility from the catching position. Um, what's your take on that, or maybe a few things that, that you did that helped you that you uh, that other players can learn from? And, and you know. well, flexibility is probably the most important thing for me. Obviously, you know, we talk to the scouts all the time about this, and they always say, "Well, I'm looking for a guy with a good release and has soft hands." And I always tell them, "I can help that stuff, but I can't help flexibility." Yeah. So, excuse me, if I can get them into a position where they're comfortable flexible and they maintain athletic position, I can usually get them to achieve anything by hmm. so, And is there uh, any things that you've seen that work well for catcher flexibility or drills or Yeah, I was I was really fortunate. I worked with uh, a man by the name of Mac Newton who was a eight degree black belt in Taekwondo when I was here in Fall League. Okay. And I would work with him in the mornings and then I would have to play at night and that was miserable. I'm just telling you it was miserable because <laughs> he was the hardest working guy I've ever seen. He gave me a stretching matrix for my lower half. And basically, it was four basic stretches, but I did them in flowing sequence. And so I went from groin to hamstring to hip flexor, then to quad, and then I would rotate to the other side, do the same thing. It's actually on my DVD. Okay. But when the more it flows together, and then you get to a position where you're moving side to side and out, your flexibility, because of your hip flexors, you know, where your glute, hamstring, it all attaches in one little area. So I've got to try to stretch that and try to make it strong and athletic so then they're able to make all the violent moves that catching has because catching is the most violent of all the positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, we got the DVD right here, Catcher's Conditioning Circuit. Um, we tell us a little bit about what's on the DVD um, outside of the fitness well, sure. or the flexibility. Well, it's, it's a little bit of everything, but... I teach about mechanics, but I think the mechanics are to the individual, they're specific to the individual. And so everybody jumps a certain way, everybody lands in a balanced position a certain way. So there are certain drills that I do, and if you recognize how a child is exploding and then landing and getting into a comfortable position, you can start to recognize what position he needs to be in as a catcher. So you're saying that you have a kid jump up, Hey, yes. Okay. Oh, that's, I call, that's a super jump. So they're in their stance. Yeah. They have to jump up as high as they can, reach to the sky, and then when they land, they have to land completely down. It's violent. Yeah. But in the same regard, when they're landing, they're going to learn to cushion the blow. When they cushion the blow, their body's going to go down in a nice athletic position. It's just, uh, it's like positive reinforcement, or reinf I can't say that word right now, I'm sorry. Positive re reinforcement. So when they go down, it's not supposed to hurt. So they're gonna find a way not to hurt. Yeah. And doing that, I say, okay, well, he's landing, his knees are down. So now if your knees are, or your knees are out. So if you're landing like that, I know where to put you in your stance to where to be comfortable. Interesting. And you mentioned that you're, you were more comfortable with your knees out. Knees were actually knees in. in. Knees in. I was like yeah. a butterfly goalie. Butterfly goalie. So if I could be knees in, like I have also have a pyramid theory this is high tech, I don't have that on the DVD. <laughs> but anytime anybody looks at a pyramid right away, you gravitate to the top right away. But within the next 10 minutes, that your eyes train downward. I know it's kind of weird, but it's kind of how I thought. Yeah. So when I made my catching stance, I almost made it look like a pyramid. At first they look up, and then they gravitate down. So my base is wider than my top. 
so then the pitchers had a tendency to miss to the wider spot rather than to the narrow spot. Interesting. Yeah, it's, I know, it's got a, got a little <laughs> psychology. I don't know if it works, but it seemed to work for my 18 years that I caught, so I don't know. Well, you had, uh, you had a good run. You got to handle a lot of pitchers. Obviously, they're a different breed. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit yesterday about your routine that you would bring them through in the bullpen to kind of get them mentally set. Would you expand a little bit on that, right? what your philosophy was uh, getting guys in the right spot before the game? There's no doubt about it. Anytime you're working with a pitcher, we talk about routine a lot because routine puts you in a happy place. And a lot of times pitchers make the mistake when they're pitching and they can't get, so let's say they can't get to extension side fastball, which is glove side fastball. Now all of a sudden they're going to waste 12 pitches trying to get over there. Well, instead, if they stick to their routine, they gave it two on, one off, two on, one off. And just because you miss your spots, it doesn't mean you forget about the rest of your game. Pitching is a game of progression and regression. During the game, when you pitch, sometimes your pitches get better. Sometimes your secondary pitches get worse. Sometimes worse the other way. So you have to be sensitive enough to recognize when those things are happening. If you stick to your routine, you never panic if you don't have a pitch that way. Routine is simple. Yeah. That's happy great. place. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> Routine. Find your happy place. Happy place. It's time for...